and we'll give you a preview of what we're going to do. Um, <laughs> I want to give you an impression as to what it's like to be a warthog. We've been talking about warthogs and the fact that they're hunting down in parlor in some parts of the world. And, um, well, we're going to do it in amongst the grass here. And what I need is a stout stick. Um, right, perhaps this one. This is quite a stout stick, David. Is this one better, do you think? Right. So I'm going to break this off. And <laughs> you wait over there for me, everyone. And what I need to do here is now attach it to my leg at an angle like this. I must just tell you that I've done this once before today, just to attempt it. And what has happened, of course, is that it has torn the hairs off the bottom of my ankle. That was very sore indeed. It's going to do it again. But I'm going to be brave and, uh, you know, push through it for the point of the show. There we go. Nice. That's the sort of idea we want. You have no idea what I'm doing, do you, everybody? I don't blame you. Now, I'm almost rendered immobile. Hang on a second, it's stuck on my ankle joint. There, that's that's what we want. That's the angle we wanted at, David. One second, everyone. We're definitely not going to be doing this on TV to do that for free. Right. Okay. Now, we were talking about warthogs, and, um... <laughs> We were talking about the fact, of course, that they have to go through this very thick grass. And it must be so difficult for them to see each other. But, David, you know what they do when they can't see each other? They do this. They put their tails up, and then they're able to see each other as they move through the bush. I think it's a rather clever idea. Don't you? <laughs> and that is... <laughs> I think this gag needs a bit of work, perhaps. Uh, but the, you get the general idea. And, oh, I mean, the <laughs> I'm trying to put a positive spin on what was a bit of a failure. Uh, the positive spin on it, of course, is that if you are a warthog, or, in fact, if you're anything that is shorter than us, you've got to walk through the bush like this. Now, in summer, that presents something of a challenge because it's actually quite difficult to see what's going on around you. You cannot see above this level. If you're a monkey, you might do this sort of thing and you sit up and then you go down and you sit up. But if you're a human being, of course, you don't have to do that. And they reckon it's one of the major selective pressures that made us actually stand up, that made us bipedal. So, two major reasons. Let me get this off my leg. I'm probably going to swear when it comes off my hair. Ah, it's off. My boot has fallen apart. It was an absolute failure. If you're a human being, of course, if you're bipedal, you can see over the top of the grass and you can see into the distance. And you also, of course, are not exposed to as much of the sun as you would be if you were on your hands and knees. But... You might ask yourself, why don't more animals move around on two feet then? And the answer would be because it comes with a tremendous cost. You're slower, obviously. We can move for greater distances than just about any other animal in, in the world. Yes, that is true. You as a human being are physically capable of moving greater distances than just about any other animal in the world. And I think that's quite something. But also... The other cost is, apart from sacrificing speed, of course, is that the birth canal now has to come through the hips as opposed to out the back of them. And that may, makes birth extremely dangerous combined with our big heads. So that's the sacrifice we've paid for being bipedal, able to see the predators coming and able to expose ourselves um, to less sun. Uh, Steph has found some more creatures that have been caught in flagrante delicto.